nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Hello, everybody. So thank you for attending our webinar today. Uh, the webinar is titled, Like Driving a Car, Acquiring Quality SEM and FESEM Images in Different Situations. Today's webinar is brought to you by Dr. Bangji Liu, working at the Nanofabrication Laboratory at Penn State University Park. Hi, everyone. Uh, yes, thank you very much you know, uh, for attending this uh, webinar. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, thank Jack for the introduction. Um, uh, just a little bit myself, you know, I, I'm, I'm working uh, at a, a Penn State, you know, like a nano fabrication laboratory. So I actually mean chart SEM, also uh, you know, ALD. You know, that's a different, another part of my job. Uh, so I, you know, I, as you can see, right, actually I, you know, I graduated from China. You know, uh, then uh, I uh, uh, got my PhD from Michigan State University. And I came to work at Penn State there. So this is my family and my wife, you know, I have two kids. Uh, this is my son, actually. Uh, he actually uh, plays saxophone uh, at the State High, like a marching band, uh, last two years, right? So what was his dream, actually, coming to Penn State, right, and then playing in a blue band, uh, maybe in two years, right? Okay, uh, you know, in the uh, later time, I actually, I like uh, taking pictures, you know, uh, yeah, right, it's my hobby. All right, uh, uh, my hometown is called uh, Dali in China. It's uh, the it's actually across sea from Japan and uh, Korea, as if you want to know where is it located. Uh, it, it, we have a mountain, we have a sea, right, in my hometown. If you want me to pick one city right, in, in the U.S., you know, uh, which close to my hometown, right, I would pick Maine. Uh, it's it very similar, you know, uh, when I went to Maine, right, I just feel home, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, uh, I work in the, uh, the clean room, right, so we have uh, roughly uh, 10,000, you know, uh, square feet of clean room. Uh, located in a very pretty building uh, called the Millennium Science Complex. Uh, I know, I hopefully, you know, someday you can come to visit that, you know, uh, uh, the building, also the clean room. Uh, we have a lot of capability inside the clean room, uh, I get, as you can see from here. Right, I'm welcome, you know, to explore what we can do for you uh, in the future. Uh, so my my talk, right, so we'll, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, have four sections. You know, I will give you some examples of different situations you know, for SEM imaging. And then uh, I will talk about the key imaging parameters, then the SEM we own. Uh, in the last, right, I want to talk about okay, then how to achieve uh, an ideal image, you know, uh, when, okay, make, make sure the beam's right. So anyway, so that's my, uh, the outline of my talk, right? But hopefully I can, in the end, I hope I can feel the passion you know, uh, I have for SEM. I hope you can have the same passion for SEM, you know, if you ever uh, use SEM, right? Okay, so okay, examples first, right? Okay, you know, so now we, you know, we, uh, we are uh, uh, clean, room, right? Like uh, we fabricate devices. So I want to give you an example, right? Why, you know, why, when do you want to use SEM? Uh, so this is actually a real example uh, from a, a research group in my building. Uh, so this is a little bug. I, I, I'm not sure you know that this name is called the spring tail cut, spring tail cuticles, or whatever. So, so the little bug, right? Very small. Then uh, it's a live in the earth, right? So. Uh, if you look at them right under the SEM, right? So you see hair, right? The body of the, the, the this bug, right? But you can see hairs. Okay, I see little crystals, right? Okay. So like the order, like they arrange them in the order pattern, right? So uh the group right so they want to use right so silicon uh to fabricate the same structure. You can see from here. So this is like a mushroom structure. Uh the reason they want to do this, right, is because you see that. So they want appear that the body of this uh, spark, right? It's something has a special property called a super water repellent. So that's actually that's what it got in the, in the end. But anyway, so so if you look at the picture, right, I have I want to see okay that to get a good image, right? Then you need a, a voltage right here. Yeah, beam voltage. Uh, you need a certain uh, working distance. So you also picks you need to pick the the uh, the detector. So this one I use the in lens, right? So see a five kV. Uh, you know, three millimeter, right? Working this is also uh, in lens. Uh, the, so it's similar here, five kV, you know, the you know the four millimeter, and then uh, in lens. But anyway, so that's a very typical uh, conditions we use to start uh, a SEM, right? Okay, see that's very typical. Uh, okay, but see uh, this one, right? So that's like a one micron, roughly the feature, right? And then uh, uh, so the the magnification is a medium uh, magnification uh, right here. Okay, all right. Any anyway, so, uh, but this. This example, right, it's a, a, it's a, it's a, a grading, like a, a sitting gradings. Uh, this actually the, you, the, the group, right, they want to use this, right, to, uh, to reflect x-rays. Uh, 
So this actually the device will send to the the, the space to collect uh, X ray in uh, this space, right? Ready? But because the X ray, right? It, uh, the X ray, you know, the wavelength is very small, so the the grading has to be small. But this one, see, that's only like less than 100 nanometer, very small feature. So we need to go to really high magnification, right, to image these gradings. Uh, so the, see the, the, the voltage I use right here is 20 kV. So, okay, so why 20 kV, right? So uh, if you think, think about the electron beam, right, so the, the beam size actually depends on the voltage. So the, the higher the beam voltage, right, then the smaller the beam size. So you can get a higher resolution. But anyway, so that's why I tr I pick you know twenty kV for this uh, device. But okay, sometimes okay, sometimes right. So you have to use a very low voltage. Uh, so this uh, example right to show you okay. So uh, you know the the graphene and it's like two D material. Uh, I'm not sure if you know two D material. Two D material is a very thin. There's only a few and one or two right uh atomic layer uh, like a sheets. So to image them right. So then you have to use low voltage. But do you know why? Because it's so thin, right? Then it's basically transparent to uh to to the electron beam. So if you use a very high voltage, right? Then so I mean you cannot probably you will not even see it's there. But anyway, so when you image right very thin material, right? You need to lower the voltage. So as this one, see that it's very low, like less than one hundred volt. But then you can see okay, you can, you can actually see the the material. Uh, here's another example. I right? see the same uh two D material, no, different. Uh, so also two D material at point two kV. Look at it, you can see a lot of surface detail, right? But if you increase the voltage, then probably you will not even see them. It's there. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, okay, this one. This, is a, this one is a 3D printed uh, structure on on glass. So, so it's a polymer structure, right? So the, the subject is also insulating. But this is uh, the whole material sample is insulating. But if, when you image insulating the material, right, then you have to make sure, okay, then, uh, I mean, sometimes, I mean, most of the time, right, you, you will get something called a charging problem. So then, uh, to, in order to over, you know, to overcome the charging, right, sometimes you need to lower the voltage, right, to image this sample. So, okay, this example, so right here, you know, to show you what it means, charging effect. So this is uh, a uh, like metal, like contact structure, right, on an uh, insulin substrate. So uh, when you use 5 kV, right, 30 micron aperture. So what it means, my aperture, right? So the, the aperture actually uh, will allow, uh, aperture is a small hole. So this will allow how much electron, right? You go, you pass through that, that hole. So the three micron, then uh, you have a lot of electron uh, pass through that little hole. So you have a charging artifact, you see that, right? But okay, so one thing I, I did, right? So when you s reduce the size of the aperture, so then uh, just allow a uh, smaller, you know, uh, less uh, electron, right? Pass through the, the, the uh, I mean, pass through, right? Then, so, uh, so this better. Okay, but the best way is that, so if you reduce the voltage, see that, but still use the same aperture, but then the charting is completely gone. But now you are able to image the sample, you know, without coding, you know, the, the sample, right? Uh, okay, so this sample, right? So see, you have two different sides, uh, uh, like uh, spheres. Uh, so the user actually they use this smaller uh, sphere, right? To cover, see that, to create this type, like a uh, feature. Uh, uh, so the so when they coat the 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 spheres, uh, but this one I want you to see. See that I'm using a little different. Uh, uh, I'm using a different uh, uh, different detector. In the, in the previous image, right, I all it, they all use you know in lens, okay. But this one, see that this one, I'm using a different detector called SE two. Okay, why? Right, see that SE two can give you the real sense of the three dimensional topography. So like this one, right? So that okay, it's better. Uh, I mean, sometimes, right? So in lens, actually, it's the most common uh, detector people use. Sometimes, like, people just stick to that. They never change the detector. But for some sample, right, you actually, you want to use that C2 uh, to, to get uh, you know, the, the information you want. So see, see this one, right, see that? So this uh, device uh, sample. So then you see the shadow effect, right? So it gives you the, again, the real sense of the topography. Uh, but that's when, okay, you want to use that C2, right? Okay. So this one, see that SE2, right? And then it's a little boat. It's a 3D printed little boat. So it's about a 50 micron uh, big, right? So for this picture, right? I'm, I use a very large working distance, 70 millimeter, very far, right? Why? But sometimes if you want to see a larger feature, right? But you have to move your sample far away in order to see the whole thing, all right? But that's why I'm using a, a large working distance. But anyway, so. So you know, we just talked about right. So the some example, and right? then uh, to get a, a, the good image, right? You need a 
to pick the right voltage. Okay, you need to pick the right working distance, right? You also need to uh, pick the, the right, uh, the, the detector. All right, so let's talk about that. So what they are, what they do, right? But when you image your own samples, because different sample, right, it's different, right? You need to you know, pick your own uh, settings. So then, um, so that's, uh, hopefully you can understand them, right? Then you can uh, change the, the, the condition, right? Uh, you know, for your samples, all right. All right, so yeah, that's uh, uh, the three key uh, parameters we're gonna talk about. Uh, working distance, uh, being voltage on the detectors. Okay, let's compare. So so this one sample, this sample, right? The same sample, see that uh, image at a two different working distance. Uh, the left side, right, is very far, it's large, very large you know, working distance. The right side, right, is a small working distance. So if you compare the two images, right, so I, so which one better? Hopefully you can see, okay, that the right side is much better. So, so what do you mean better, right? So it's much clearer. So if the main image is clear, right? So what do you mean, right? Which means the beam side is smaller. So then, so then, so when you change the working distance, right? Actually, the beam side will change according to the working distance. Okay. So what is working distance, right? So let's see, right? See right here. So this uh, the the okay the the column of the SEM. So this is your sample, right? So the distance uh, between okay your sample, right, and the final lens. So this is uh, the working distance. The same thing, so this is actual uh, you know, chamber uh, uh, inside our uh, SEM, right? See, the, the distance. This is just how far your sample is from, from the SEM, from the column, right? So when you change right, the, the sample height, you know, uh, closer and far away, so the beam size, see that the beam size, if you section the beam, right, the beam size will, will also change. So when your sample is very far, right, even though you focus the beam onto your sample, the beam size actually is bigger uh, when your sample is closer. But, anyway, so, but that's why you know, in, in the beginning, right, when you load your sample into the chamber, so the first thing you want to do, right, you want to move the sample up like this close in order to get a good image. Oh, that's the first thing typically a user uh, need to do in, in the beginning. So this is, okay, this picture, right, also see, see that the detector, see, right? We mentioned detector earlier, right? So inside uh, the, the SEM we have, so we have two detectors. Tip, yeah, so we use them, you know, the most of the time, right? So why is called the in lens? So it's inside the column, okay? So that's why it's called the in lens, all right? It's inside the column. But the other one is called SE2. It's outside the column. So what do you mean? So they are actually at different locations. So so that's why, okay, when you use them, right? So they actually, because the location is different, right? They give you slightly different uh, information. Okay, let me, let's compare, okay, the, the two detectors, you know, what they can do for you. See this, again, the same sample right here. So, okay, the same voltage. The left side, right, you know, it's the in lens. The right side is the SE2. Okay, see, see, see different, right? So which one is better? Yeah, if you give you a couple of minutes, a second, right, to see which one better. So, uh, you know, I think that I like the right side. Do you know why? Okay, so there are spheres, right? See, like there's spheres. If you look at, look at the, the left side, so this is like a flat. So they like a disc. It, it didn't really like a three dimensional like sphere, right? But right side, you no, know, the SE2 has to actually give you the, the, the real sense uh, of the detector, right? of, the, of, the, of the morphology. Uh, okay, do you know why? Okay, the inland, right? It's above the sample, right? So it's like a projection, all right? It's like a projection, see that? So the left side, the, the SE2, you know, it's on the side. So it can give you the shading effect, see that the shading effect? So that's why you know make the 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 you know, the topography look like three dimensional. Uh, here's another example: the device, uh, the fabric device, right? Like the edge silicon structure. Yeah. Again. Okay, so, uh, so then you can see, okay, the 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 real uh, the sense of the device. All right. So, uh, okay. Okay. Let's look at now. Let's look at the voltage. Okay. The left side, the right side, right. So the same sample. It's a silicon structure, a silicon nanowires. Uh, Okay, we we just grow. Okay, uh, before see so two kV and five kV, so the same working distance. So if you compare them, right? So which one better? Look, if you look at the left side, right, left image, right. So you can see a lot of surface detail. See that the detail, right? But on the right side, see the wire. It looks like tread bare, like tread loosened, right? Okay, do you know why? Because the wire is so thin. It's only like two hundred to three hundred nanometer, uh, you know, wide. So. So when you use high voltage, right, the 5 kV, uh, the beam, right? So the beam will penetrate through the whole wire. Okay, so the signal you collect, right? You collect, it's, it's, it's the average of the whole wire. That's why you know, the wire looks translucent. But on the left side, 
when you use a low KV, 2 KV, right, the, the beam cannot penetrate through the wire, but it gives you the surface, you know, the, uh, the, the detail. So, I mean, so you can see, right? So, so when you use different body, right? You know, you know, it's, yeah, maybe it will look different. All right. Okay, so let's see why. So let's see why, right? So when you shoot electron, right, into your sample, right, see, right? The electron will actually penetrate into your sample. Okay, then you will collect the, the, the electron, right? Escape from the, from the sample, right? So this, this is called the interaction volume, right? So, okay, so this interaction volume, right, will depend, actually depends on the voltage, right? Also depends on the material. So if the voltage is low, right, so that you will have much smaller, you know, volume. But if the voltage is high, right, you have much uh, higher volume. So what do you mean, right? So if the, if the voltage is, uh, is smaller, it's a lower voltage, right? So then the signal will come from the surface more. So if the voltage is high, so the signal will come, you know, from deeper depths, right? That's why you can then for, uh, for like a wire, like a very small, uh, thin sample, right? So it, it, it does not work, right? Okay. So, so right now, see, I mean, right now you can use a, uh, like a software to simulate, see, 5 kV and the 0.5 kV. So you see, if you look at the, 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 the volume, right, you can see huge difference. So at low kV, you have a very small uh, interaction volume, but that's why you know, it works for 2D material. So this is another example, right? See, it's just only one, okay, this material is only one or two layer. You actually, when you use a low voltage, you can actually, uh, you can actually uh, see uh, the, the, the layer, you can even count, okay, so how many layer you have, right, okay, uh, so for low voltage, when you use the low voltage, but you can actually compare, see, 0.5 kV, right, uh, so this is a polymer sample, so I, I use a different voltage, 0.5, 1 kV, 3 kV, and 5 kV, yeah, look at them, yeah, at 5 kV, right, you can barely see the, the structure, uh, but when you use 1 kV, right, so okay, I think it's the best voltage uh, I like, it can give you the contrast that you can see the your structure, right? But again, anyway, so you see, right? So uh, the body play a very important role. Uh, okay, when you image a sample, uh, it really depends on some, uh, uh, you know, it really depends what kind of you have. Uh, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to give you the wrong impression, right? Then high voltage you know, is no use. Okay, let's let's look at this sample. See right here, five kV, ten kV, uh, the twenty kV. So this uh, uh, sample, right? See that. Uh, contain 20% serum. Serum is uh, heavier than aluminum. See that? At the 5 kV, right? You cannot even see, you cannot even see the where serum is. But when you increase the voltage, right? 10 kV and 20 kV, you start to see the little particle, you know, you know, appear. Okay, do you know why? So most likely, right? So the, this particle, so they're actually embedded. You know, it's below the, the, the surface. So when you use the low voltage, right? You cannot see them. But when you use high voltage, because the beam can penetrate deeper into the sample, now you start to see the, those particles. Okay, it really depends on the, what you need, to, what you need, right? So I mean, uh, depend on your sample. So now you need to pick the right voltage for your sample. So when the when the electron you know, interact with your sample, right? So it can also emit X-rays. So if you have a detector, right? You, if you can collect this X-ray, right? It can tell you what element you have inside your sample. So, okay, here's an example, it's a, it's a, a device sample, see that? So when you use a EDS mapping, right? You can tell you, okay, where the silicon silic is, where the metal gate is, and where the octa is. So next we're gonna talk about the actual SEM we have uh, inside our clean room. All right, we have two SEM inside, uh, Merlin and the G500. Uh, both are made by uh, Zeiss. Uh, so, I mean, for the most sample, right? So uh, both are very good SEM, uh, top of the line. So they can do a similar job, you know, for most samples. Uh, but for, but they are also a little different. Okay, so Merlin, right, can do high beam current under high resolution. Uh, the G500 can do low KV under high re resolution. So, okay, for EDS, so right, EDS, right, it re EDS require high beam current. If you want to do EDS, right, then you need to use this one. So if you uh, have a 2D material, remember we, we mentioned a, a 2D material require low KV. So this one is better for 2D material. Uh, it depends on your sample, then you need to pick the, the yeah, sometimes you need to pick different SEM. Okay, why these two? Okay, so let's compare the, the low KV. So this one, right, so we just got it a couple years ago, it's fairly new. Uh, and that's why the, this one is, you know, can do low KV and the high resolution. But if you compare, right, Merlin and the G500, see that the same sample, uh, a similar, a same condition. 
uh, for treating material. See, morning, you know, it's not that good, you know, so the AB is a little fuzzy, right? Uh, but the, on the right side, you know, uh, the G5 can do a really good job uh, in imaging, uh, like a, you know, a low KV, like a 2D material, right? So the SUY, you know, Merlin and the G5 can do a little different, right? So it depends on the design of the, of the SEM. So the, the G5, right? So the, the column is called the Gemini 1. So inside the, the uh, inside this, uh, the column, right? You have, you have a condenser on the object lens. So if you compare to uh, Merlin, right? Merlin has two condensers, see right here, two condensers. Uh, but the G5, G5, G5 has only one condenser. Uh, but that's why the Merlin, right? So can do high beam current. So you can change the setting, right? You can change the setting of these two condensers, right? To condense the beam. So then the beam can uh, pass through the, the aperture right here. So then you can you know, uh, have high beam current, right? But at the same time, you maintain the resolution. Uh, but inside the G500, right? You only have one condenser. So then, uh, okay, you can already you know, do uh, the same thing, right? As this one can do. Uh, okay, so, but it's, 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 uh, it's you know, optimized for low KV. Uh, but it doesn't mean you cannot change the beam current uh, inside uh, the uh, G500. But what you can do, right? You can, you can actually change the, so right here, the aperture is right here. Uh, inside the, the, uh, the G500, you, you have a like, multiple hole aperture. So you can change the aperture size to change the beam current. But when you change, when you use a larger aperture, right? So then actually the beam side will be bigger then, you know, so you have high beam current, right? But you cannot have this, uh, the, the high resolution at the same time. So yeah, th this SEM, okay. Uh, I think this SEM, I, I put it uh, today, right? So this SEM owned by CNU. I know you are interested in the, the CNU program. Uh, CNU has a, 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 a very good SEM. Uh, so like a roughly more than 10 years ago, I took this picture using the, you know, the, the, the Ultra 55. Uh, it, it, it does a very good job at that time. Uh, okay, so we talk about, we talk about different situation, right? And, you know, uh, when you uh, image your sample, then you need to, uh, okay, make sure the voltage is right, right? The aperture is right. Uh, you know, the, the beam current is right. Okay, then working this, all these conditions, right? But okay, how, when you change those uh, parameters, how can you make sure, okay, the beam is right? So if you want to uh, get a good image, right, you have to make sure the beam is good. So how can you make sure, right, so at a given condition, so the, the beam is right. When you're sitting in front of the SEM, you may be overwhelmed, okay, then it's really complicated. But if you look at inside the column, right, so what you have inside the column, it's actually not that complicated. So let me show you what's inside the column. Okay, the first you need is a source, electron source. So then, because it's a electron for you, right? So then you have aperture below the source. Uh, you have a lens. Okay, so here's the sample. So then, okay, then you're gonna, okay, see the lens, gonna focus the beam, right, onto your sample, right? So then you're gonna have signal come from the sample, then you, you need a detector to collect those, uh, those uh, uh, signals. Okay, this is all. So because, it, again, since that, we are using scanning electron microscope, right? We have a special, okay, uh, you know, uh, component called a scanning coil. So this is actually a key to the uh, scanning electron microscope. So let's see, right? So let's see, you know, why we need a scanning coil for uh, for the SEM. So when you direct the beam, right, to your sample, right? Okay, see that? So then you collect the signal, but you have a pixel on the computer screen. But you have to move the beam, see that? You have to move the beam, right? So then to get the, 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 you know, the uh, second uh, pixel, right, from the sample. But then you need to raster. Okay, then you get the image, right, on the computer screen, okay. So so the scanning, right, so scanning SEM is actually, is, but this is actually very special uh, to scanning SEM. Uh, but it, so this uh, the this how we collect the image, right? But it does not, I mean, so again, so if you see what scanning, right, so we, I mean, there's other uh, type like AFM. Probably some people use the AFM, right? It's all the AFM is all the scanning technique. So the image process be actually the same, right? Okay, I want to stop here. So the more, see, see, right? See whether the, the uh, okay. If you know, okay, the how the image form, right? Uh, for a, cement, a scan SEM, but how do you define, okay, magnification? How how do you define magnification? Or what do you change, right? To, uh, to make the, you know, to when zoom in, zoom out, right? So what component do you really change? Yeah. So, okay, see that? Okay, so typically you, what you change now, you change the scanning size. If you scan a smaller size, right? But you still display the image to the, to the computer screen, the same size. 
but then you go to higher magnification. So okay, so when you change uh, when you zoom out, right? Then okay, then you need to you need to inc uh, increase the scanning area. So that's how we zoom in, zoom out. Uh, Merlin. So Merlin, let's say we have Merlin, right? We can do a very large field view. See this one here. We can do three and by three by four millimeter. This is actually a very large uh, field view. Uh, when you go to a very low, you can go to a very low uh, magnification. So okay, so now I'm gonna ask you one question, right? So I mean, what do you require, right, to make a good uh, to make the beam ideal? So what do you require? So how can you make sure the the beam is ideal? So what you know, what kind of what kind of beam, right? So okay, you you want, right? So to make an ideal beam. So one problem you have, right? See, no, nobody actually. I, I mean, the actual beam, right? It's hard to imagine. It's hard to uh, visualize. I, I mean, we can already see the beam. So I want to use that. Okay. So I want to use a pencil. Okay. To uh, okay. So because the actual beam is like a pro. So we can it's like a pencil. Uh. So what do you mean? So that you have a pencil like this, right? And then see the other pencil. So then you drag the pencil across a bump. So the profile is actually your image. So, so let's compare, see that? If you have a blunt, right, a blunt tip, if you have a sharp pencil, so what, you know, see, let's see what's the difference we can, we can make. See that? See the profile, so if you have like a, a blunt uh, pencil, right? See the profile you have? It's larger than the actual object. But if, if you have a sharp pencil, right, then uh, the, the profile is smaller. It's more, it's more close to the actual object. So what do you mean, right? So the tip side matters. So of course we're gonna prefer a uh, smaller tip side, right? Because you we're gonna have a better resolution. But what happens if the if the shape, if the shape of the the tip right is not is not is not wrong, if we have an oval shape right like this, so what kind of image we gonna get? Okay, the same. Okay, we still have a, a you know, wrong uh, sample, right? So that. So if you use a, a like an oval beam, right, to uh, uh to pro Profile. This is the tip, right? See, the, the profile will be stretched like this, right? So, if, okay. If you have a, a, you know, if the 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 tip, right, you no, know, stretch along the different direction, the profile we are getting, right, is gonna stretch along different directions, right? Okay. So what do you mean, right? So the tip shape also matter. So how does the beam shape affect that image? So you know, let's see that. If you have a a circular beam shape, right? Then if you have a like stretch like this on the stretch the beam like this, so the image will go like this. See that? Image will go like this. All right. So what do you mean, right? If the beam, right? If the beam stretches, the image will be stretched. If the beam stretch along a different direction, right? The image will be stretched along different directions. So that's what they're gonna see, you know, if you have a stretch beam inside SEM. So so hopefully now I'll okay, so if I ask you the same uh, the question again, right? So what is an ideal beam? So what do you require, right? So we, okay, we're gonna require, right? A small beam, we beam, we prefer the beam so smaller, right? We're gonna prefer, right? A, a round, the shape is round. Okay, that's one more thing, right? The beam has to be like a straight, a, a line. So okay, we, we're gonna talk about them, right? So uh, what they are, you know, what how we can make sure the beam is right. Okay. So, so how do you, okay, how do you achieve a sharp beam uh, inside SEM. Okay, so, okay, see this one? If we, okay, so, yeah, if we can focus the beam, right, as a user, right, so the one thing we can do, right, is focus the beam. So when we focus the beam, right, okay, we're gonna have a sharp image, right? If the focus is not right, so that if we, if we focus the beam, right, below the sample surface, or if we focus the beam, right, above the sample, right, it's called a under or over focus. See the, the section, right? Cross section of the beam is going to be bigger. So the image you will get, right, will not be clear. So what do you mean, right? So, so when you change the, the, the focus, right, you actually make the beam size bigger or smaller. So of course, you know, every time that like, you need to focus the beam, right, onto your sample surface, then you can get a sharp image. So, okay, see the, yeah, when you change the focus, right, in, in and out, you're gonna see the image, right? See, it become bigger and smaller, right? The clearer or no, not clear. So that, so as a user, right? So the, I mean, one thing we have to make sure, right? You always have to uh, focus the beam, you know, first. Yeah, so now we know, right? So when we uh, make a good focus, right? We make the beam smaller. So what about the, the shape of the beam? Right, okay. So let's think about, okay, uh, let's look at this diagram again, right? 
So what, which component control the beam shape? The source, right, the aperture, you know. So which component can, uh, control control the, the beam shape? Okay, so if you look at the, the, the lens, right, the lens, okay, so we are trying to use, okay, a lens, right, to focus the electron beam. So because we are trying to focus the electron, right, so what do we use, right? We use actually, mag we use feel. We use field right, to control the electron. So it's either you know a, a magnetic field right or electrostatic field. But typically we use a, a magnetic field right to control the beam. It's, it's a, something called a pole piece. It's a, it's a piece of magnet right. We have coils like a cord right you know inside the the, the pole piece. So when we run a current and we create a field. So this field right will control the beam right. But think about the 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 the, uh, the pole piece right. You have to machine, right? You have to machine the pole piece into a perfect precision. If, even though if, if, if you have one micron, okay, if you have one micron error, right? So you will create imperfection inside the field, right? So in this case, right? If the field is not, uh, uh, it's not perfect, right? The beam will not be, will not be perfect. So what do you mean, right? So the, the, actually the lens, this, this lens, right? Actually has to be perfect, right? To give you the perfect beam shape. Okay. So what do you mean, right? So let's see, okay. So we, we actually have a name for this. It's called a stigmation or stigmatism. Oh, okay. So this actually, uh, okay, if you have, if you know you, uh, the field is not symmetrical, right? It's not perfect, right? So how can you correct it? So in practice, right, inside the uh, SEM uh, column, right? So we, what, what do you have? You're gonna have uh, like typically two sets, like uh, something called a, a smaller uh, magnet, right? Around the lens. So then we, when you, uh, because the lens is not perfect, right? Then you have a imperfect shape, right? And then you're gonna apply, you're gonna change X, Y. You're gonna squeeze that, right? You're gonna squeeze the beam, right? Into a perfect shape like this. That's how we crack the, uh, the beam, right? But uh, sometimes we have, in some SCM, we have like four sets, like a, like a uh, stimulator to control the beam, right? Okay. So now let's draw. Okay, now let's uh, like look, look at look at the, the stimulation a little more, right? So okay, so now you know, right? If the lens is not it's not symmetrical, so we're gonna have a problem called a stigmation or stigmatism. Uh, stigmation is actually very popular. It's you no, know, it's a, it's actually in any uh, optic systems. So think about our eye, right? So the human eye can also have this problem. So if you wear, you know, if you go to a doctor, right, if you wear glasses, right, you might know this problem. It's called a a stigmatism. So what do you mean, right? So, so what, what's wrong with the eye with, with the eyeball? You know, when you have a, a stigmatism. So human eye, right? Typically, it should be like a spherical shape, perfect spherical shape, right? If the if the the eyeball is not perfect, like a, a spherical, right? You're gonna have this problem called a stigmatism. What do you mean, right? So okay, we have muscle. You know, if you look at your eye, right? We have muscle to uh to pull the eyeball right into a perfect shape. If the muscle is not strong enough, so then you're gonna lose the perfect shape, right? Then in the eyeball, so the eyeball will become oval. Then you're gonna have this problem. Okay, so now let's, so the, the actually the stick mechanism right, is exactly the same mechanism. So let's look at them. Okay, look, look at this real diagram. So if the lens, right, it's not, uh, it's not uh, wrong, it's like oval. So what, what are you gonna have, right? You're gonna have a, a, a long axis and then you have a short axis. So, so when the electron beam, right, pass through this lens, you see that? So now it's gonna depend which way the electron, right, pass through this lens. So if, when the electron pass through the lens, right, horizontally, the focus is right here. If the electron pass through the lens, right, vertically, see that? Because, you know, that you, we have two different axes, right, and then, so the focus will be different right here. So when you section the beam, you're gonna have a line here, a line here, right? But they actually they point to two different directions, like vertical, like perpendicular directions. So, but at the center, you know, you, you when you section B at the center, right? So you're gonna have a transition point called a minimal confusion, right here. Okay. So now let's look at okay how this will affect image. So again, okay, so when you section the beam, right? You can have a line here, you can have a line here. Okay. So then, if you well, if you go a little closer, right? You can have oval shape, like pointing to a little different directions. So they see like, okay, see? So that's gonna, okay. If you have stigmation, right? That's what they're gonna see. Okay, you have a different shape, have pointing different directions. So if your sample is right here, 
see the image will get, gonna stretch along this direction. If your samples right here, right, see the image will be stretched along different directions. If you are here, right, so if you are here, the image, you know, it, you know, the shape is fine, but you see it's not clear because the, the lens is not perfect. We need to correct it. So anyway, so now we see, you see, when you have this problem, right, okay, then I need to correct segmentation. So how can you correct it? How can you correct it? So the first thing you want to do, right, you want to find this point first, all right? So by changing focus, right, okay, you need to find, okay, you need to focus the beam right, right here. So then, okay, they, so we have two knobs, like segmentation, right? So then when you change these two knobs, right, so then you're gonna, okay, you, uh, so this, you're gonna uh, crack, no, you're gonna reduce the segmentation. So when you reduce the right, this two line will go will move closer. So when this two line move closer, so the center point will shift a little bit, right? So then you need to focus again. See that? So then, okay, then, so uh, then, okay, the the image will be will uh, will be smaller, right? And then this two line get closer. Eventually, so the two line it will collapse to a point like this, right? But how do you know when you are there? So when you have a cone beam, right? How do you know? So then you need to test again. How, right? When you section the beam, right? Uh, right now, right? So the, 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 the cross section will be always circular. So the image you will get, right? See like this, let me show you, okay. See, the image you will get, right? So it will not stretch anymore. So that's when you know uh, the beam is, 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 is uh, the same is gone right now, right? Okay, so, but now you see, right? So when you change focus, right now, so, you, you, if the image, images change shapes, then you know you have a problem, right? But then you need to uh, correct it, right? Then you change the focus, right? Then you change the X, Y, uh, stigma, uh, stig stigma, right? And then you force again, right? Eventually you will get this. So that's how we, we know, right? We have stigma. That's how we know, uh, we, uh, uh, uh that's how we, uh, we change the, the correct stigma. Okay. So this, uh, uh this, uh, that's the stigma. So now let's talk about the, the alignment. Let's talk about why we need a straight beam. So okay, so right. So uh, if you look at the diagram again, right, we have a source, we have after, we have a lens. So so these three components, right? So uh, they have to be aligned. The center has to be aligned, right? See, then you have a per a perfect beam like this. If the aperture is off like this, see that the beam will go like this. But how do you know? So if the beam is off like this, right, how do you know? So like a like stick mission, right? You need to test it. You need a way to test it. The way the beam's off like this. Uh, okay. So remember we talked about the beam, right? So if the if everything's aligned, right? So that's what we so when you change the focus, so the focal point will will shift up down. Like this, right? So then you get the image like this, right? So like this, okay. If the beam is off like this, so when you change the focus, so the image will see that the focal point will shift. Up, down, right? See that like this. At the same time, the beam will also, you know, you know, will, sh you know, will uh, change, will, you know, shift left, right. The image, you see that the image will go like this. When you change focus. Okay, what do you mean, right? So, so when you change focus, right? If you see the image start to start to shift left, right, then it tell you the aperture is off like this. Then what do you do, right? But then you need to you need two knobs. See that uh, X Y alignment knobs. So now you need to uh, shift the aperture back to this location. But then when you change the focus again, right? If you see the image it does not move like this, so then you know your aperture is is, is aligned. Okay. So so that okay. That's how we uh we align the beam, right? Okay. So right now I see that. So we want we want a small beam, right? We want we want a round beam. We want a uh, you know a, 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 a straight beam. So, so then when you focus, right? If the beam's not right, when you focus, right? Then it can tell you, right? It can tell you, you know, what's wrong with the beam. If the, when you change focus, if the beam, if the, the image start to uh, change shape, right? You know, okay, you have a stigmation problem. When you change focus, right? When, when you see the image start to move, the position change, change, right? Then you know, okay, you have alignment problem. But then you just you go ahead, right? Then you just uh, change the focus, right? Then you, uh, changes X Y segment then change X Y alignment. So then you can. That's how you move the beam back. But in the end, you need to change the focus again. Okay, to uh to make so if you do not see the image stretch, if you do not see the image 
uh, move, and then you know, okay, your beam is perfect. But then you can get a good image. Okay, so now uh, you will see, right? And then actually, uh, change, okay, getting the good image right, is not that hard. To control the SEM, it's not really hard. So, but when you see it in front of SEM, right, it does not matter you know, what SEM you have. So if you can find, okay, where the focus is, right? If you can find where the stick mission is, right? Whether, whether alignment is, if you know this five control, right? So you should be you should be able to run SEM, yeah, without without problem. So so that's why I'm thinking. You know, it's like a driving. So driving, right? Then I mean, you if you can drive one car, right? You know the the control, but then you can drive almost any car. So any so if you know the basic principle, right? Then uh, I think you should be able to run SEM. You know, uh, any SEM uh, without any problem. Okay. Uh, any so I think that's uh, all I have. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Benji. That was really well done. And um, we had a couple of questions come in um, through the chat throughout the presentation. And I, I know Renee had answered this one. A couple, a little more technical questions also. So Benji, you just went through those those three optimization parameters with the stigmation and the wobble. Do, do, does the order that you do those in matter or it, does it not matter? Like, do you have to always do the stigmation first or is there a certain order that makes it easier for the user? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, the no, alignment, right? alignment, symmetry, that's a two thing we need to worry uh, most of the time. Uh, actually, it does not matter, you know, which one you do first. Uh, uh, typically, I, what, I, what I do, right, I, you, when you uh, change the focus, right, you just evaluate okay, which one is the worst. You know, if, uh, if uh, the symmetry is the worst, right, then you can do a, a symmetry first. If alignment, you know, is, if the image starts to move, right, significantly, I'm going to uh, fix the aperture first. Okay, so that, you know, again, so the order doesn't matter. But typically, you need to sometimes you need to do a couple of time. You do you, you do uh, one first, right? And then, but you, then you come back, you know, you, you evaluate the beam again, right? And then you just you repeat that till the you no know, till uh, uh till you know the beam is perfect. You know, okay, it does not move, it does not change shape, right? Then you know the beam's right. So many okay. so the order is there. Yeah, order is not, it's, it's not it's not a does not matter. Okay, um, and so another question is. It, diffraction is diffraction a concern uh, when working with an SEM? Do you have to worry about diffraction, especially when imaging things that are similar in wavelength to the electrons and things like that? Right, diffraction. I think uh, if you uh, SEM, you know, it's a little different from TM. Uh, probably, uh, I mean, the user, you know, uh, no TM. The TM, you know, you uh, you have a very thin uh, like sample, and then you have diffraction pattern. Uh, but for SEM, we we don't have we don't we don't we cannot see the diffraction pattern at all. Uh, but if you do a uh, stem, like uh, you know, SEM can also can also do stem, so that's when you need to uh, again you need concern about the diffraction. Or if you do a uh, uh, EBSD, yeah, so then you need to worry about the diffraction. But typically, you know, uh, uh, for SEM, you no, know, typically it's not a problem. I okay. I'm not sure if that answer you know, your the, yeah, the question. Okay. Um. So for samples that aren't good conductors of electricity. Um, you had mentioned this this charging. So, do you have to coat these things with with a metal, or are there other options to get good images without charging? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's very good. Idea. Yeah. The the charging. Yeah. Yeah. I think right now, uh, I mean, people you know trying to image right the insulin material, uh, even like a, a bio material, they are all insulating. So charging it, it's a big problem. Um, I think you we used to you know uh code the sample if you have charging right then you just go and code your sample. Uh, but right now you know there are different ways uh to get around the problem, right? So uh, one thing I mentioned, right, is to change the voltage. Yeah, when you use a lower voltage, right? Some use use you have to use a high voltage, right? I just try, you know, I just try, okay, then if I can uh uh image the sample right using different voltage. Uh, if I cannot, right, then then that's when I want I will consider you know coding the sample. Uh because it takes time, you know. So I just try the you know, first you know, on SEM. Uh, but there's another strategy right now. So uh SEM. Uh, so right now you can uh, you can uh, you have SEM called a VP, uh variable pressure. Uh, you can actually you know you can image your sample right under like a uh, like a higher pressure. Uh sometimes use water, right? Or use uh, air or use nitrogen, right? So when you enter, you know the 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 gas inside the chamber, the gas module can neutralize this charge, but then it, it will allow you to image insulin insulin material. I think right now we, uh, I mean the SEM G500 is a VP VP SEM, 
So if you have a issue limiter, we can actually uh, try VP mode, see hmm. if, if we can uh, get around that problem. So is the trade off with that the resolution's not as good, or there's got to be some downside to using that mode, right? Exactly. So I think the uh, so when you you know the pressure is not good, right? and then uh, it can uh, affect the electron. Okay. Uh, so then yeah, you it, it will affect the resolution. So it depends. Okay. If you have a very small feature, right? You no, know, I think VP mode is not good. I think a coding, you know, either you know, use low different body, right, or code a sample, uh, going to be your best choice. Okay. Um, so we had another question come in regarding the workflow. So the question is, um, is the cycle of focus and stigmation uh, commonly applied for all types of samples, such as metallic nanoparticles or organic nanoparticles? Are you using the same workflow that you described in your presentation for the focusing and stigmation? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, you focus first. You know, every time. Uh, every I, time. Yeah, I, I typically when you okay think about the focus, right? I mean, when you move your sample right, from one location to the other, your sample is not perfect flat. So even though your slight change, right, then that will affect the 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 image quality. So you you, you I mean you always I focus you know, for almost every image, right? But when you focus right, then you you just notice the subtle change, right? If you see all oh, the 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 shape right of the feature changes right, you know okay you need to fix the stagnation. If the image starts to shift right a little bit right, then you know okay you need to fix the uh, uh, alignment. But anyway, so when you change the focus right, just pay attention to the subtle change of the image. So but anyway, so you, you you know what what you need to do. If you understand you know, okay how the the you know how the, the stagnation work right, how the alignment work right. You just know, okay, then when you when you have a problem. Um, so another really interesting question just came in. So um, I'm actually really curious to hear your response for this one. So can you pulse the electron beam and collect in some multiple images or many images to get higher resolution images with smaller voltages by basically increasing the signal to noise ratio? So can you pulse the beam and some many images to get better resolution with smaller voltages? Oh. Uh, yeah, you no SEM. You cannot report really the beam, and the beam is a constant raster. Yeah, constant raster. You know, you cannot stop him. But what I think I, I think I, I just trying to guess right. You know what I'm trying to mean? So you can actually increase uh, called the dwelling time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's how you get a better image. Then you can, okay, you can let the beam stay right at one pixel for a longer time. So then you 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 average right then, uh, the signal, and you get a better a better you know. Uh, uh, Contra, you know, like a SVR ratio, like you know, uh, signal to noise ratio. Uh, that's what you can do, right? I mean, most sometimes I think I in SEM, right? You can change the beam current. Okay, when you use a little, when you use a high beam current, right? So you will increase the 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 you know the, the image quality. Now, if you do too much averaging, are you going to be more susceptible to things like drift getting averaged into your image? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think it depends on the sample. So if you have a metallic sample, right, it does not charge. Yeah, you can do that. You know, I mean, uh, it doesn't matter the time. It doesn't matter. But if you have a, a, a insulin material or you have a, a bio material, yeah, you will have this problem. I mean, even the the beam probably it can even damage your sample. So in this case, you can already do that. But right now, the SEM right now, okay, they they also the the vendor actually they, they did a very good job. You know, they can they 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 not really, you you can have something called the, the drift compensation. You can scan, yeah. You can scan. Uh, you don't have to scan line by line, right? You can skip a couple line, right? Then you can come back. So that's a, some strategy right now you can use, right, to uh, to overcome that problem. Um, so one one more, we'll do we'll do one more question, um, and I think this is a very important question with respect to um, keeping the equipment operating. Um, so it's about the working distance. So. First of all, the first part of the question is, does the working distance depend on the, the physical size of the sample? And then the second part of the question is, what is basically the smallest working distance you can use without actually risking running into something or damaging the machine? Right. Cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. For I mean, yeah, yeah, it is a concern. I think, uh, I think that's a common concern right, to any SEM. So, I mean, uh, now you know, okay, then if you uh, use a smaller working distance, right, you can get a better image. So people tend to you know, okay uh put the sample very close to the SEM, but then you may okay uh crush your sample right to the to the SEM. You either damage the SEM or damage your sample. 
So, Penny, so that, that's it. It is uh, typically I can, you can, I use two or three millimeter. So that's uh, the work it is I use, so two or three millimeter. Uh, but if, again, so uh, as you know, I, that I show you in, uh, in an example, right? But it really depends on your sample size. You know, you, you, somebody, you, know, you mentioned the sample size. If you have a larger feature, right? Like a micron, uh, like a millimeter feature, right? But then if you want to see the whole thing, but you need to lower the stage, you need to, you know, you to see the whole thing. Yeah, I think that- like that, right. that boat you showed us, right? That little one micron boat. You saw the whole boat, right? With the large working distance. Exactly right. You have to, you know, if you are very close, right? You only see a tiny, like a, a tiny, like a field view, but you cannot right. see the full boat. But then you need to lower the body, right? To increase the, the working distance, then you can see the whole thing. Uh, it, it, it definitely depends on the the the, the feature size. Uh, yeah, you need to image. Okay, so yeah, uh, I mean, if you have a chance, right, welcome to visit us. Uh, so we are uh, the. This our, we have a lot of stuff right here. We you know we work on the instrument right, on the equipment for a long time, like over ten years. So if you have any question related to uh, SEM right, uh, or LD, you are welcome to uh, you email me. Uh, but again, we have some other you know uh, uh, capability right uh, for uh, fabrication. So any so if you ever need a need right, so you, you are welcome to email us right here. Yeah, to let let us know then how we can help you. Perfect. Thanks, Benji. And yeah, when I was, um, you know, close to a decade ago, I got trained by Benji on a lot of the equipment that he's shown in this picture. And uh, almost every single person in that picture in the top right still with the Nanofab. So they're a great staff, a great team, and they've been together working together for a long time. So um, really appreciate Benji uh, helping us out with this today.